Good morning, folks. Snap, crackle, and pop. We begin the day with a double-peaked M1 flare, followed by a powerful M8 flare eruption. You will see the two peaks of the M1 coming from different active regions, followed by the larger M8 solar flare from almost dead center disk. The flare, like so many recent flares, failed to produce the type of CME we're used to seeing from these eruptions. The surge was mostly confined to the surface, interface, and coronal regions. The mass of sunspots is directly facing Earth right now, but those two southern groups are the biggest, popped our flares, and remain our primary watch on the sun. We see a solid magnetic mixing where positive blue and red negative interact. Both sunspot groups now hold the potential to fire some more. The eruption triggered a level 2 radio blackout over Australia, Indonesia, and the Indian Ocean. It has waned away now. The solar wind is relatively calm as speed tapers down in Earth's magnetosphere, doing alright this morning. We've got a cosmic ray surge. Even without telemetry for the neutrons on the left, we can see the rise, and on the right, we've never seen the line hit 103, so we could be entering some interesting territory there. Dark patch incoming on the south is the negative southern coronal hole. The positive northern opening is now finally departing the disk, and with it, near-Earth space switches from positive to negative influence. Top quakes of the last 24 hours include one down near Antarctica, and another in Indonesia, right as the flare occurred, right under the radio blackout, and which seems to have rang a bit higher than 5.6 on the full readings. Got a great link down below to Curiosity's methane discoveries on Mars. I won't spoil that one for you. We also have some early release images from the Global State of the Climate Report from November. Solid mix of hot and cold and flood and drought. We'll have more when the full report comes out, but until then, let's go to Rutgers for the official snowfall data. Northern Hemisphere snow anomalies here. You'll note that the fall snow extent is actually at a record high, and both fall and winter are trending upward in snowpack, albeit with a quick disappearance of it as spring seems to come on stronger and faster these days. Looking just at North America, we are at a record high for snow extent. Again, fall and winter are trending upward with more snow, while again, spring comes on strong and snowpack trends down in those months. On to today's weather. Two of the most powerful storms on Earth right now are in the North Pacific. These are likely to come through the U.S. and Canada at some point and make for a rough end to the year. Current temperature delta in the U.S. and Canada is all based off pressure. We have a central high pressure node driving clockwise around it and reinforced by the surrounding lows to drive those temperatures. But out west, the story is system after system on deck. There are a number of lows that can be seen out there, and each of them has a convergence and a cloud line. Just look at them one after the other. More than 80% of the U.S. population needs to check their local forecasts around lunchtime today. So in Europe, it appears we have one giant mass of purple, but it's actually two separate systems we're watching. One is clearly the Atlantic flow where high and low converge and drive towards the land, but what doesn't drop immediately is actually meeting another flow coming up from the Mediterranean and shooting up past Finland. You can see the two systems there. Down under, we see the convergence over New Zealand and also that same meeting of air masses in northern Australia from every direction. Cloud line atop New Zealand and clouds popping over Australia. Those will be our watch areas for the next few hours. Don't forget that suspiciousobservers.org is undergoing site upgrades. If you were there yesterday, you might have seen us tinkering with a new design for a few hours. Your patience is greatly appreciated. Mobile Observatory is in Jackson, Mississippi today. We'll try to inspire some love for the sun with the students at Jackson Academy, and then have a meet and greet with any locals who want to come hang out. Details can be found at observatoryproject.com. We've got current conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.35 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.